Ukraine's southern offensive is a crucial part of this war. Its main focus is the region of Kherson. The areas controlled by Russia are marked here in red. And the big prize is the regional capital, also called Kherson. It's strategically and symbolically important, but despite how much this matters, finding out what's happening there is hard. Ukraine's imposed reporting restrictions. Most of the front line remains off limits to journalists. Some, though, do get limited access, and the BBC's Jeremy Bowen is one of them. A little earlier in the week, I messaged Jeremy and asked if he'd record his thoughts on where the battle has got to. Let's take some time to see what he said. My conclusion about the Kherson uh, offensive, which has been ballyhooed now for months, is that it's moved either very slowly after some earlier successes, but the main thrust of it is stalled. And so how do I assess that? Well, um, here's an example. Uh, if an army is attacking, there's a buildup of, of men, of machines, of ammo, and I haven't seen any of that. I've seen a little bit of military activity. But, you know, we've heard that they're not as well supplied as they'd like to be. And you need that preponderance of offensive power to, to break a well-prepared position. So a lot of it is second-guessing and trying to work things out. Uh, you know, it is difficult. As Jeremy says, it is difficult. What's happening inside the city of Kherson is unclear. We do know, though, that in the wider region, Ukraine has regained some territory, but reporting on those gains poses challenges. The, uh, the Ukrainians are quite controlling about what they let us film. Now, yesterday, after these raids, and this was part of, part of it, uh, we went to an area to film and there was a large university building there and we weren't allowed to film it. We could film the civilian houses that were hit and destroyed, but we couldn't film the university building. Why? I don't know. Were they doing something there that was secret? Did they not want to show the Russians that they'd managed to hit it? You know, we don't know these things, but there's, of, there's often also a pattern, which is when the war is new and when there's that sense of shock that it started. You can do local deals as a reporter with uh, commanders and you say, well, will you take us up to your positions? And they say, yeah, come on. But after a month or two, what tends to happen, not just here, but in pretty much every other place I've been, um, but pretty much any, every other war I've been to, is that the, it, they get organized. Their information side gets organized. And so they put restrictions on what we do. It's not a sinister thing. This is what always happens. These days in the 24-7 digital world, that winning the media war is critical for all sides. They want to get their point of view across. So they try and control what we do. And our job is to not be controlled. You know, strategists talk about the fog of war and trying to work out what the hell's happening. So personally, as someone who's, as a journalist, I've covered 20, or more wars, I'm not surprised that it is difficult to find out what the hell's happening, because it's always like that.